Hey, welcome to The Dignity Effect. My name is Naya Abernathy. I'm the founder of The Dignity Effect, which is an educational platform for social emotional learning for grownups. My husband asked me a question and I wanted to talk a little bit about it here. He said, how do you value the dignity in someone who does not value the dignity in you? Um, And the first thing I thought of was, how do you love your enemy? (laughs) Um, There are people that I've met who do not like using the word enemy um, and are very generous in how they categorize people uh, and the, the place that people hold relationally to them. And some of us are not. Some of us are saying this person is an enemy to me for whatever reason. Um, or this person is playing the role of a villain in my story, um, sometimes intentionally. And so there can be a lot of reasons why it might be hard or why we may need to be really intentional around seeing the dignity in someone who is not seeing the dignity in ourselves. So first, let me uh, just give you the definition that I work with of dignity. Dignity is the God-given intrinsic worth and value each being carries that cannot be taken away. And so what this means is that person who has postured themselves against your good, whether you call them an enemy or a villain or a knucklehead or whatever you want to call them, um, or if you're more generous, Uh, and you have a different way to kind of name uh, the role that they're in, Um, that means that that person holds the same quality, quantity, texture uh, of worth and value as you do. And it comes from the same source. It comes from uh, a source that is bigger and more expansive uh, than we are something that we can't just pluck it out of somebody else. We can ignore it. We can deny it. We can, um, downplay it. We can do a lot of things around somebody's dignity. We could try and cover it up or shroud it, but it's always there. Even in, uh, those who intentionally or unintentionally posture themselves against us. And so what do you do? How do you value their dignity? Uh, Depending on uh, the proximity of your relationship, this may or may not be something you can do. Uh, But I think one of the things that is important for us to do, as long as it's safe, um, is to truth tell. Uh, I think we need to tell people who have postured themselves um, in ways that are harmful uh, towards us, whether they're physically harmful, verbally harmful. Um, uh, they could be harmful in in uh, pow- power dynamics and things like that. Uh, that we tell the truth, that we call out what we're seeing to call them in to a place of choosing a different way to relate with us. Um, And that calling out to call in comes from a place of hope, a place of seeing their dignity and saying, my desire is to honor you and for you to also honor me. So there's a reciprocal nature to this relationship. It doesn't necessarily have to be close, but there can be something reciprocal happening. We don't have to agree on everything, but we can agree that we both hold worth and value that we both are an equally important part of the fabric of humanity and the greater uh, um, tapestry of life that exists here on this earth um, and that it matters. It matters how we see each other and how we treat each other. Uh, And so that truth telling can be a very important part, again, of calling out the issue to call the person in. and particularly with boundaries around that issue. You can't treat me this way or say these things to me um, as we navigate what it means for us to have um, some reciprocity in our relationship. If they're not close, if that's not the relationship that like can't sit and talk to somebody or you can't um, do an action 
that can kind of be very um, uh, beneficial in the truth telling and there's some sort of an exchange. Uh, a lot of it then has to do with um, what you do and don't do with this person who has some uh, less proximity to you. Um, the only other time I could think of where they might have close proximity, but you can't really talk to them is, is a power dynamic um, where you might not have access to the person easily, or you might not have access to do some of that truth telling, but they're still kind of close and some of their decisions very much directly affect you. It could be in a work situation. It could be in a familial situation. Um, and, and in those uh, instances, I think we do have to uh, posture ourselves in a certain way. How are we going to um, uh, talk about this person even within our own inner dialogue? What are the stories we're going to tell ourselves about this person? Um, if you can't find out anything else about this person, if there isn't more storying for you to learn about this person um, or these people, um, what does it mean for you to take what you do know and find, seek out the humanity in it? Um, and in that process, we do find dignity in people who are distant from us or in people we don't have um, heart access to, uh, to say some of those things uh, or to have some of those conversations. And so what, is, what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, so that looks like... Uh, taking maybe that whatever they're saying or doing or believing that is harmful to you or that denies your dignity and putting that to the side and trying to see what are particularly common elements of humanity that you have with that person. Are you both parents? Um, do you both live in the same town? Uh, are there some things about your background that are similar? Um, have, have there been some losses or painful things that you both have experienced, um, whether it's loss of loved one, loss of, of job, whatever. There are ways where we can connect with one another. And I think when there is distance and you can't do the truth telling, you can't call out the action to call someone in, being able to humanize them on your end is probably the most effective way to honor their dignity, even if they don't honor yours. Well, what's the point, right? Why would you do that anyway? A lot of it is for us to remain tenderhearted towards one another, for us to hope that people can change, and for us to really maintain in our lifestyle, in our living, in our way of being, this reality about dignity. Because if I refuse to see dignity in somebody else, but I see it in myself, what I'm seeing in myself is not dignity. Dignity is common and is shared among every, every living thing, every human, even when those humans are not being particularly kind or beneficial humans to themselves, others, and the greater creation. And so that would be my quick answer to uh, the question, how do you practice valuing somebody's dignity when they don't value yours. Uh, if you want more, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and check me out over on Instagram at The Dignity Effect. Uh, there will be more there and I will see you soon.